Hello! In this video I will be showing you how to integrate the Firearms Evolved Asset Pack into your game project. So I assume that you already went ahead and added the Asset Pack to your game project. Now if you want to use the player character that's provided in this Asset Pack, this Asset Pack comes with a player character that has a pretty basic movement controller so you can jump, you can sprint, you can crouch. Uh, if, if you're fine using this, if you don't have your own already, then you can just go ahead and play. Make sure that you have the world settings window here and you need to use a game mode that actually uses the PP FPS player controller and the BP FPS player character. But if you do already have a player character, you don't want to use the one that's provided, I will show you how to do this right now. We can create a new player character. We call this BP test character. So I also assume that you already have a camera on your player character. Then the first step that you need to do is you click add, you add an arrow component, which is a child of the camera. You can name this anything you want. I will call this bullet origin. And you want this arrow to be centered in the camera. Now you need to go here, type in tags, and add the bullet origin tag. Why do we need to do this? This is where the bullets will spawn. Uh, all of the bullets in this pack actually spawn from the camera, not from the rifle. So you need to create this arrow so that your weapon know where to spawn the bullets from. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is add a reserves component. AC FPS reserves, just add it to your player character. This reserves component stores all of the ammunition that the player uses to reload the weapons. If you don't have this component, you cannot reload your weapons. Um, finally, you need to pass on a reference for your HUD, or if you don't have a HUD, you need to replace it on a firearm. So here it's trying to get a reference to the player HUD. If we want to use the pre-existing player HUD on our own character, we can do that. On begin play, we just say create widget. We select the widget blueprint FPS player HUD. We promote this to a variable. And then we add it to the viewport. If we did this, we still need to change it here. So we need to get a reference to the player HUD. Right now we're casting to the BP FPS player. We created a new one, a BP test character. So we cast to that instead. Cast to test character. And then here, this needs to be compiled first. We, we say get HUD. Pop it in, now it works. And then you also need to go to the AC reserves component and you need to do the same thing here. So instead of uh, casting to the BP FPS player, you need to cast to your own player character and then pass on a reference to the player character as well as passing on a reference to the player HUD. If you want to use your own HUD, that's fine. I recommend right clicking the player HUD down here on the runtime and you say find references. This is where the firearm tries to call the player HUD. So here it's set. And then here is where it gets it to update the magazine counter. So it just says, okay, the firearm has changed the magazine. So there's a bullet less in there now, or it's reloaded. So all of these references, you need to place it and replace it with your own HUD and you need to hook up your own logic. So there is one more thing that we need to do. If you take a look at the recoil, if we shoot, it brings up the weapon and after we're done shooting, it brings down the weapon. However, if the player counteracts this, it doesn't bring the weapon down beyond the point where we started shooting. Um, so this only works if the weapon actually knows the mouse input of the player character. So we need to transfer this to our firearm. So what I recommend doing is wherever you set this up, you probably have some logic that's um, just looking around. So here you have the X and Y values of the mouse. And then you need to get a reference to the player firearm. I created a macro here. I just somewhere on your player, you will have a reference to your, to your firearm that the player is currently holding. And you need to call the player camera input and transfer the yaw and the pitch input every time the player moves their mouse while, while they're holding a weapon. This is all you need to do 
to set up the player character. Now next we're gonna take a look at how to set up reload animations if you wanna create new reload animations. It's very simple but there are a few steps to it. So you go to your reload animations. Let's take a look at the rifle animation. So you have this reload animation. Uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna create a montage. Okay. Now we have a montage. What you need to do here is you need to right click and you need to add a new montage section. And you need to add one section for mag out, mag in and cycle action. So three in total. And this should be at the points where the, the player starts taking the mag out. So we can see here, we start taking the magazine out. Then this is the point where we start putting back in a new magazine. And this is where we start cycling the action. Okay. You can also add all the sounds you want here or any particle effects that you want to be playing while this animation plays. Um, there's nothing on the actual blueprint, so you need to do this using animation notifies, but it's easier anyways. And for those of you who don't know, you just right click here, add a notify, and you can either play a sound or a particle effect. And then every time the animation passes this frame, it will play a sound. So then you need to add a new track. You can right click here, add notify track. You can call this whatever, I call it reloads. And here you need to add, right click, add notify, montage notify. You need to add three in total and you need to call them again, mag out, mag in and cycle action. The names have to be exactly the same, otherwise it doesn't work. Where do you put this? So if the animation reaches this point, if it reaches this event, the weapon will finish the stage. So here we start taking out the mag and here is where the, the animation sends a mes message to the blueprint saying, oh yeah, the mag is out now. And then the logic will be ran. This means that if we cancel the reload after this, the logic will already be executed. Then the same applies for the mag in. The moment it reaches this notify down here, it will, it will run the logic of putting a magazine in. And then here, once you reach this point, it will cycle the action. So for example, if you have a long reload animation and you put this earlier into the animation, then the player can actually cancel this. Well, it, it does this. And at any point now, the animation is still playing, but if the player cancels, the, the logic is already executed. The moment we reach this, the logic is executed. So if the player cancels the animation any, anywhere after this, already did the cycle action part. So basically mag in starts mag out starts here, this is where it ends. Mag in starts here, this is where it ends. Cycle action starts here, this is where it ends. This is all you need to do. Then if you create a firearm, there are the settings. You go to animations and here you can provide the proper real animation. This real animation, as said, needs to be set up properly. Otherwise the reloads or the staged reloads won't work. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, join the Discord server. You can ask me any question there. I'm happy to help you out. Otherwise, you can also take a look at the online documentation. Everything's explained in a lot of detail there. Or you can check out my other videos.